So, um, I want to welcome uh, our guest speaker this evening, Sidearm Madonna. Uh, Sidearm is, in fact, um, a former uh, participant in this module, one of our star graduates. Um, but he did come in as a as a mature student. Um, so he has a, a full career under his belt as an engineer, uh, now retired, residing in Texas in the USA. I forgot to ask you earlier, site is it snowy and cold where you are for a change? It's been very cold. <laughs> right. That's something new for you guys, I suspect. And in Sight's um, career, um, he has made a special study of teamwork and how teams function uh, and how people work together. And he brought that knowledge into the online environment, where he also specializes as a facilitator for um, online engagement and other such activities. So um, he has returned pretty much for every module since and presented on teamwork which gives me a bit of a break, um, but it also means that you're getting some really expert insight into how teams work. And just so you know, next week I'll introduce you to the team project and we'll divide you up and assign you into teams. So you'll be working on that project from next week on. So the information that you're getting here um, this evening should really help you in that. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Sidearm um, and I will step discreetly to the side. Thank you, Sight. Alrighty. Okay, well, I'm going to get myself placed over here. And my slides are against the wall. And I'm now sitting on top of them. So I'm a visual out pointer for you. So whatever you need to do, you know, just aim your cursor and do an alt click on it. Or if you're in a Mac, do a command click and and then you can kind of zoom in and read them. Um, I'll also mention a few little tricks I'm using here before I formally get started. If you are going to use slides in your presentation of your project, if you put them in the classroom ahead of time, everybody will be able to see them by the time you get started because they'll stop being fuzzy and, and become clear. I mean, they're probably fuzzy for you right now, but they'll get clear over time. And as John said, we're gonna be recording so over to my right in the corner is a chair and an old-fashioned studio camera. I'm going to turn it on. We are rolling. I'm going to go on air. We are on air. Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to this presentation on teamwork and collaboration online, sponsored by Technological University Dublin. Please direct your attention to the slide labeled teamwork and collaboration online. For those familiar with using alt click or option click to zoom in on it, please do so at your convenience. My online avatar is Sidearm and my offline avatar is James Neville and I am a specialist in online presence. This presentation will be an image, voice, and text, and is being recorded. Our menu for today is a few minutes of basic material, followed by discussion, followed by a few more minutes of extended material, and concluded with a live group demonstration. In today's presentation, I hope to reinforce a few things you may already know about teamwork and collaboration online and to introduce a few things you may not already know and for us all to have fun and learn something together as we go along. Please direct your attention to the slide labeled Team Operations Model, which is by my avatar's left leg. From an analytical point of view, a team may be considered as a box with input-output arrows. The input arrow on the left represents the members of the team. The output arrow on the right represents the results of the team, its project. The arrow coming down from the top is the constraints on the team, such as their assignment, 
And the arrow coming in from the bottom is the things that support the team in getting their job done. My job here today is to be one of those support arrows coming in from the bottom. Please direct your attention to the slide labeled Effective Teams Have Effective Members. Each of you bring an individual investment to the team box based on what you already know how to do and whether you're willing to do it. These are your competence and your commitment, and together they make your net contribution to the team. High competence and high commitment make a high contribution. Low competence and low commitment make a low contribution. If either factor is medium, the net contribution is medium. Most of the time, one or the other is going to be medium because of practical constraints. The question is, what do you know how to do, and are you willing to do it? Please direct your attention to the slide label, Effective Teams Share Roles, which is at the bottom of my left foot. Your team brings a group investment to project success based on how well your members cover nine team roles. These include auditing, diplomacy, implementation, leadership, networking, planning, quality control, and specialist knowledge. Higher coverage makes for higher success. Lower coverage makes for lower success. Most of the time, one or more of these roles are not covered by team member competencies going in. The question is, what don't you know how to do? And are you willing to learn how to do it? Please direct your attention to the slide labeled Effective Teams Use Best Practices. Which is now by my left avatar leg. This is how you and your group communicate. Brainstorming is a divergent, expanding exercise where new ideas are generated. Deciding is a convergent, narrowing exercise where choices are made and action steps commence. Briefing is a narrowing exercise where agendas and ground rules are stated before an event begins. Debriefing is an expanding exercise where members reflect on what just happened. Throughout a project, your team will cycle between divergent and convergent communication. The question is, which mode are you in at the moment? And when is it time to switch? Please direct your slide, your attention to the slide labeled Effective Teams Develop in Stages. Forming is where you learn each other's names and how to get in touch with each other. Storming is where you argue with each other about how to do stuff. Norming is where you get used to each other and agree on a plan. Performing is where you crank out results. Throughout a project, your team will cycle back and forth within these stages. For example, learning new things about each other, adjusting to changes in circumstances, adapting, improvising, and adjusting even up to the last moment. Please direct your attention to the slide labeled Effective Teams Evolve. Right now, you are in a team project called Is One Life Enough module. When this team project is over, 
you will certainly go on to another team project. You're always in a team somewhere. Your home, family, classes, school, work. Each time you participate in a team, you experience a growth cycle. Listening to what is being asked of you this time. Choosing how to participate this time. Then acting, advancing, and extending. The question is, what are you willing to learn how to do next? So we're going to continue now. Go back on script. You already answered that question. Good job. So these are extensions and I've moved my avatar over to the kind of the last area of the board. You can just kind of focus over there. Please direct your attention to the slide labeled intentionality. Bunch of little smiley faces. Intentionality is predicting how other people will think, feel, and behave based on how we ourselves would operate. We do this using identity emulations running in our brains. And Jacob, your mic is on again. We are capable of running six emulations deep, although four is the norm. For example, in the movie Star Wars, how did Darth Vader feel about Luke Skywalker finding out that Princess Leia was Luke's sister? You, thinking about Darth, thinking about Luke, is two layers of intentionality deep. And how did Han Solo feel about how Emperor Palpatine felt about how Darth Vader felt about all that. That's four layers deep now. Please direct your attention to the slide labeled Persona. Persona is how we present ourselves to others. The word comes from the Greek word for mask. We have more than one persona tailored to our motivations, to the motivations we attribute to others, and to how we predict that they will react to us. Typical personas include at home alone, which is your inner self, at work, which is your formal self, with friends, your informal self, with strangers, your cautious self, with children, your open self, and with elders, your respectful self. At all times and in all places, offline and online, your communication with others is through some persona. The question is, what persona are you using at the moment? And when is it appropriate to change or update it? Please direct your attention to the slide labeled social brain, which looks like an ear. The identity emulations we run in our brains are constrained by cognitive limits. For detailed emulations, our limit is five close connections. Think of parents, children, loved ones. For bare bones emulations, our limit is 1,500 distant connections. Think of people you know who don't know you. For moderate demand emulations, our limit is 150 meaningful connections. Think of people you frequently see and interact with. We make decisions every day 
about where and with whom we invest our time for social interaction. And the people in our lives cycle in and out of these categories as our decisions and circumstances change. Please direct your attention to the slide labeled Social Media. With brains constrained to recognize 1,500 people max, how do we deal with a city of 1 million like Dublin or a world of 8 billion like Earth? Perhaps we can leverage our meaningful contacts. If we each have 150, and each of those has 150, and each of those has 150, how deep do we have to go to reach a million or a billion? The reach of social media was estimated at 3 billion in 2020. Justin Bieber and PewDiePie had 100 million followers apiece on Instagram and YouTube. So perhaps we can indeed leverage our 150.